So in the last segment, we talked about visual clarity, or otherwise known as visual acuity, the level of detail that you can perceive. The visual acuity test is typically done using high contrast targets, so a crisp white background and a really dark, bold black target. Now, real life isn't like that. So often when we're playing, we might be playing in adverse conditions. We might have difficulties with masks fogging up, all that kind of thing, playing in sort of fog in drizzly conditions where you might have an opponent's team who's really well camouflaged against the background. So just as important as somebody's visual acuity is their ability to differentiate between different levels of contrast. And that's classically called your contrast sensitivity. Now, going back to the classic optometry chart that we looked at right at the start, we've also got a faded out version, which is this side. And as you can see, the letters are getting smaller, but they're also getting more and more desaturated. We've got, again, using this system, a more advanced way of actually measuring that high spatial frequency contrast. So if we double tap on the system, with this, we've got four circles. And hidden in one of the circles is a pattern. In here, it's really quite easy to see. So the grating here is quite dense, it's quite tightly packed, and the contrast between the target and the background is really quite straightforward. Now, as we progress, we'll find that the lines become more spread out and the whole pattern becomes fainter, so they're going to become much more difficult to see, and we'll show that in the example. Now, things that can affect our contrast sensitivity is age. So as we get a little bit older, sometimes the lens inside the eye becomes less clear, so it lets less light through, and we tend to find that we become less able to differentiate in between subtle areas of contrast. Uncorrected errors in our prescription, so as we said, long-sightedness, short-sightedness, and typically the astigmatism side of things. We can find that we can actually have really quite good vision day to day, but as soon as the light drops, for example, um, driving in twilight, playing, as we said, in sort of suboptimal light conditions, we can find that our visual standard becomes sort of impaired beyond the level which we would normally expect. So if we just sort of activate the system, Again, just sort of running through the demo, we can see that the screen is more desaturated than it was. We can see the target is there, easy to find. It's here and it's down there. So that's just a, a little entry level sort of um, demonstration just to see how the test works. If we go into the test proper, it gets difficult pretty quickly. So again, we can see now that we've got much less differentiation between that target and the background. We can see there it's on the right, it's at the top, and now, even at this distance, it's getting quite difficult for me to pick it out. Now, what's really important is if somebody does have poor contrast sensitivity, that can be enhanced. So it can be enhanced by using special spectacle lenses. Not necessarily always that practical for playing paintball, but also we can do some work with special contact lenses. Refractive surgery, like laser, that can be a really, really good procedure for most people if they don't want to wear contact lenses or specs. The problem that laser surgery can cause sometimes is a reduction in your contrast sensitivity. So we can find that people have surgery and can see really, really well in high contrast conditions, but as soon as the light levels start to go, we find that they lose vision. 